This is Cannabis Chunk. I've spent over 3,000 hours on this account attempting to explore the entire RuneScape map one chunk at a time. I have to complete every task in each chunk I roll before I can unlock a new one. I've completed many grinds ranging from hundreds to thousands of hours, but right now I have no tasks and it's time to roll a new chunk. Let's go. Let's just roll. God. No fucking way. No fucking way. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my oh my god. I mean, do you know what? Do you know what? That's like not even actually like like that's so good. It's not that good. Like it's, it is so good. I've wanted it for so long. But oh my god, we've waited 35 episodes or something for that. Oh my god. Don't really know what I want. I feel like the Barris chunk could be fun. It's the only real sort of fun one on here. Now that I've got access to the rune shop, the barrows would actually be pretty doable, at least in comparison to what it was before. Chunks we want to get. Number six, come on, just give us number six. We want to do barrows, that'll be fun. So we're back to 30 chunks. I can't believe we missed barrows. As if we rolled this and not barrows, that's so infuriating. I am so unbelievably happy about this. I've had like the biggest smile on my face ever. I'm pretty sure this became rollable in like episode three or four or something like that. And we have just missed it. 40 odd times in a row. So finally getting it is absolutely crazy. Time to unlock the chunk. Finally, Barrows is unlocked on the account based in Mauritania, the chunk the only chunk account with access to extreme well, the only extreme one chunk account with access to Mauritania. And we can use the boaty, so our run here won't be as long in future. Can I jump over this? I've never seen this before. Is this new? Ish? Oh my god, I can! 25 XP. That seems quite good, no? Um, we're here. We're at Barrows. Finally. Finally. I, I you know, once we'd got, once I'd like lucked out, because I swear like in the first episode, I lucked out and ended up down here, right? And I, I got to here in the first episode. And then at some point between two and three and four, we got Morton. And I was like, ah, oh, it's just a matter of time. Don't you worry. It's just a matter of time. And then what? We did like all this <laughs> since. So, finally having this is so good. Oh, can you imagine if I'd actually got Slayer, though, when in Edgeville and not got locked out? Like, I could have had, like, a whip. Like, oh, all that for Barrows would have been immense. Imagine how much of an awesome geezer I'd look in, like, full Torags and a whip. That would have been a chunk of count and a half, but at least we still have the Torags. So, oh, I'm so excited. Okay, let's take a quick look at this task list. It is just, it's a thing of beauty. 46 tasks, 70 attack to wield Torax hammers, 70 defense to wear melee barrows armor, and 70 strength to wear Torax hammers as the only skill tasks. So basically none, seeing as we've got all those. And then it's just a whole long list of best in slot items. Got to complete this quest, but I believe that is just a barrows run. Do this elite step here, loot a barrow's chest while wearing any full set of barrows. Again, pretty easy. And then just the collection log slots for all of the barrows gear. This is just so big. This is so big. So many of these items are like not just like best in slots, like you know, upgrading from a myth sim to an Addy sim or something like that, but just legitimately really, really good gear. So yeah, this is very, very, very exciting, I have to say. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I'm so happy. Ooh, I've got a feeling all warm and gooey inside. You bumder!
Originally released in May of 2005, the Barrows refers to the six burial mounds east of Morton where the Whites of the Barrows brothers reside. If you'd like some more details about the law of how and why the brothers came to be buried here, then I'd recommend this video by my friend Alien Food. There are six brothers corresponding to the six mounds, and each of them need to be defeated before looting the Barrows chest at the centre of the crypt. Each brother has its own unique ability. Arim has Blighted Aura, which reduces your strength level. Darok has Wretched Strength, which increases his max hit by 1% for each hit point he is missing. Guthan has Infestation, which gives him a chance to heal for whatever damage he just dealt. Carol has Tainted Shot, which gives him a chance to lower your agility level by 20%. Torag has Corruption, which gives him a chance to reduce your run energy by 20%. And Varak has Defiler, which gives him a chance to ignore defense and armor bonuses, as well as hit through protection prayers. All of the brothers can hit you very hard with their standard attacks if you aren't adequately prepared. So unlocking this chunk at the late juncture that I have may actually have been a blessing in disguise. Only five of the six brothers will appear in their crypts on any given run. The sixth brother, randomly selected each run, will be located in the tunnels. After killing the first five, you're to head down into the tunnels, take out the final brother and loot the chest. Okay, so we are here on our first trip, and I feel like this is probably the best setup. This is the best stuff that I've got aside from the Scepter. Got some decent prayer bonus in the Soul Cape and the Ring of the Gods. Uh, and the rest of it is pretty much defense bonus, because you don't actually need attack bonus to kill the brothers, like that, because they've got negative, negative mage level, so that's fine. Uh, just going to use the Air Wave, because apparently they've got an Air Weakness now, so I should be hitting 30s with the uh with the air wave which is pretty cool but it's time to kill my first brother though it isn't <laughs> because i forgot a spade so let me just go grab a spade hey you ah. my current gear sucks it's all right man I, I i've got nothing i mean look at my dragon med helm I i've literally got a hood but i'll tell you what doesn't suck this video's partner creator crafted w what's that creator crafted are a runescape merch creator what What's RuneScape? Creator Crafted are introducing six new LED signs and they honestly look amazing. What's LED? It lights up and makes your room look pretty. Yeah, uh, this might need more than one sign. Luckily, Creator Crafted has you covered, as well as dozens of signs. They also have a ton of new mouse pads, including Araxor, Jad, and Zola designs. M mouse? I, I don't know about those, but there's plenty of uh, rats down in the crypts. You really are a waste of space, aren't you? This isn't even a real scythe. Anyway... Creator Crafted have also teamed up with Witchy Crafty again to release a selection of plushies. Zabak, Mole, Kraken, and Rocky, to name but a few. They do look cool, actually. Uh, soft. Like, like me. Shop Creator Crafted's newest releases today and use my code FRAY10 at checkout for an additional 10% off your purchase. Link in the description. Okay, I've also been informed now that I have my spade that there's a mini quest to do, which I did think I saw on the chunk picker. So let's uh, let's grab that real quick. Uh, can you tell me about the brothers? That's fine. He gives me a book. Read that. If you want a more in-depth version of this, go and watch Alien Food's most recent video <laughs> on the barrows. Right. Just says dig, dig, dig. Okay, I'll be back soon. Right. I guess... That's that, and we'll just go and get stuck into a barrow's run. Right, who should we kill first? Let's go for Varak, shall we? And there is the music track. We should absolutely delete these. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to kill them quick enough sometimes to not get hit by the prayer drain thing. Because uh, if I can avoid that, I will actually be in a pretty nice spot where I won't use too much prayer. So yeah, we just got hit by it there and lost eight prayer points, though. That's not actually that bad. Uh, but... We got a new music track, and we have very nearly... <laughs> can we hit? Can, can we hit? And we have just killed our first Barrow's brother and got a combat task for it. Very, very cool. <sighs> this is going to be a fun chunk. 
The rewards chest of Barrows is by far the most exciting thing to me about the Barrows. Alongside generous lashings, lashings, love that word, of runes, you are also eligible to be rewarded with the Barrows Brothers' own armour and weapons. There are 24 pieces in total to collect, and due to them all being on the collection log, and my being an extreme one chunk iron man that must fill the collection log for all the content that I can access, I will need to get all 24 of these armour pieces and weapons. Surely my RNG will hold up after the Edgeville spooning, right? I've never gone dry before, after all. Okay, so I've brought the rune knives for Arim because I'm hoping that this will do some decent work on him. Uh, well, it'd be great to show you, but that's my tunnel. Okay, time to go and get stuck into our first tunnel. Uh, it is Arim, which is actually by far the most annoying tunnel, but I guess it's not the end of the world. Um, right. That door... Okay, that's our only option. Right, let's get stuck in. Looks like the door isn't right close to us. I can't remember the rewards percentage that you actually want. I feel like maybe it's like eight. Because you oh, although do I want bolt racks? Because the Carol's crossbow is very likely to be my best range weapon, right? So maybe I do want the bolt rack. So it might actually be worth getting the one hundred percent. I'll have to think that one through. Okay, here is our boy Aram. I'm hoping I'll be able to take him out with the rune knives without actually getting my prayer back up. Although, I guess actually I've got more prayer on me than I have food. Right, next, in fact, in future I'll probably actually use the prayer doses. Uh, but looks like I can take him out in a pinch without them, so that's fine. Uh, right, but we've now killed all the brothers. We've got 88% potential, which is supposedly optimal, uh, I think. Uh, and we should be able to get our first chest. We should get the thing from the quest, and we should get a load of runes. Hopefully we can get an item on our first chest as well. That'd be pretty iconic, right? No, I thought it was for a second. I bet everyone gets fooled by the, uh, by the strange icon. Right, we got the icon. Or did we get the icon? Uh... Did we? I don't have it in my invent. I think I might have deleted it. <laughs> okay, might have to come back for that next time. Okay, we've got a slightly clearer invent this time, so hopefully we'll get the strange icon and be able to keep it. There we go. We have got it in our invent now, and we've got our death runes. So it is slightly painful having to run out of the caves. I will say that. Um, I think... My gear setup and invent setup and stuff is probably not quite optimal yet, but we will keep working on that. But we're up to two kill count, and we do not have a unique item yet. So, uh, yeah, safe to say I'm never lucky, right? Okay, so we have the strange icon, and so hopefully it will be relatively easy to just hand it in, and that should be the quest done. Yes? Yeah? Old man gives you a lamp and a crypt. Oh, the crypt map. That's excellent, isn't it? I think I saw in Alien Foods video that this gives us the actual map in the barrows, and that will probably actually be very helpful for me. Use the lamp to receive 20,000 prayer XP. Why not? Uh, still 85, sadly. But that's a couple of tasks done, I guess. On the RuneScape wiki, there are many routes offered as the best methods of getting to Barrows. Six different routes, in fact. The best simply being a teleport to Barrows, and the worst being running from Canafis. Well, my account's name is Canafis Chunk, so any guesses as to which of these is my best method? Wrong! I wish it was Canafis. My closest teleport to Barrows is literally... The Varrock Teleport. <laughs> so every single trip, I need to run all the way to Barrows from the center of Varrock. And so extending the amount of chests I can open per trip is vital. Okay, so we managed to get four chests on the food that we had. Safe to say I can jig around the invent a bit, but surely we're just going to get a good item here, right? Never lucky. Uh, but we got four kills with the kind of setup that we had. I think I need to do, like take less prayer, more food, something like that. 
And then hopefully we can get more kills in one trip. Because four at a time with my closest teleport being ba uh, being Varrock. That sounds rough. <laughs> I'm attempting to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of this year, my first year being full-time on YouTube. So if you've been enjoying this video so far, please check down below if you're subscribed. It's quite possible that you aren't, even if you've watched this entire series. So go on, make my endorphins flow. Right, we're about to hit 10 kill count. This is the last kill of the trip as well. Surely we're going to get something right. So we did get a combat achievement, so I guess that does count as something, right? Oh, I've unlocked the easy tier of rewards. I didn't think of that yet, because I guess I was only like two points away. I guess I have to have Berthorpe to turn that in, right? You have rewards to collect from Garmel. Oh, can I... Because isn't one of those... Is it easy or medium? One of them stops the prayer drain at Barrow, so that would actually be really good. Uh, but I guess Gommel is this chunk at best. Maybe this one. So what, we're at least two rolls away. That's quite cool, though. At this point, I had a bit of a brainwave. But first, I'd better describe how the loot mechanics of Barrows work so that you can understand why my brainwave is important. Now, this bit involves some maths. Ooh, maths! To get your head around, and so in an effort to keep you all engaged, I've brought in a very special guest, Yanil's finest chunk man, Josh. Yes, hello, isn't gamer at your service? As you all know, Frey has to get all 24 pieces of Barrow's gear, but let's talk about just what exactly that means in terms of numbers, so get ready for some fun Barrow's math. The first thing to understand is that Barrow's is one of very few pieces of content that has two different loot mechanics running simultaneously. There's the Barrow's equipment drop table, and the reward potential drop table. If you've ever done Barrows, you've almost assuredly seen this on your screen somewhere, but it doesn't actually control everything you get out of the chest. Let's go back to the first loot mechanic, the Barrows Equipment Table. When you open a Barrows chest, you get one roll on this table for each of the six Barrows brothers killed, plus a bonus roll for some reason. So with 24 unique items, 7 rolls per chest, and a bunch of confusing math, this comes out to about a 1 in 15 chance to get any Barrows item from the chest and well over 1,000 chests on average to complete barrows. But you also get other stuff from the chest, and this is where the other loot mechanic comes into play. The reward potential is a number shown as a percentage on screen, but there are some interesting numbers going on under the hood. The wiki states that the reward potential is, quote, the sum of the combat levels of the monsters killed capped at 1,000. Nice and clean. But then you also add the number of brothers killed times two for some reason? So the actual maximum reward potential is 1,012. So to get to this 1,012, which remember is the total combat level of all monsters killed, it requires killing all six brothers plus some monsters in the tunnels to maximize the secondary rewards of Barrows, the runes and bolt racks. So, Frey, what's the plan to deal with the monsters in the tunnels? My character has historically been very, very strong. However, only in the wilderness. By far, my best items are the wilderness weapons. These items, at the cost of Revenant Ether, hit 50% harder within the wilderness. Outside of the wilderness, however, they're not great. Luckily for me, the Barrows Brothers themselves have an air weakness, and so I can still hit 30s with Airwave, even outside of the wilderness. However, the other creatures in the crypts have no such elemental weakness, and so when killing them up to my rewards potential, I've either been airwaving them for 20s or using my Vigora's Chain Mace to hit 24s. Exceptionally lame, but then I had this brainwave. Two of the creatures are rats. Would my bone equipment from Scurious work on them? Okay, so we're going to make some adaptions to the setup, and that is going to involve grabbing myself the bone staff. Now, this thing is a, is a rat bane weapon, essentially, uh, and if you hadn't noticed, there are rats in the crypt, so I think this is going to be a good option for killing those. Uh, I'm also going to grab the ectoplasmator, which... Uh, essentially works as like free prayer xp from the barrows i think i'm gonna get 20 prayer xp per brother that i kill so across like a thousand chests that's gonna be like 120k uh prayer xp which is actually pretty cool congrats to chunk Sinny here who is 
a viewer of mine. I'm getting 99 Slayer on a chunk account. That's pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to grab that and we're going to grab this. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to keep the runes on me or not. Tough choice. Uh, yeah, tough choice. Oh, right. Rat staff. Right, let's give this a go. Is it any good? Okay. Okay, I would say that's better. Right, I'm just going to ignore everything that's not the rats. Because supposedly I can, like, one-hit these rats. And it's looking pretty good, right? So it'll be rubbish against the brothers, so I should definitely use the air spells against the brothers. But that seemed promising to me, using the rat staff against the, against the rats. That was pretty cool. Oh, the rat bane is so good. Just instant hit 35 with a staff and it costs one chaos rune. What a dub that is. It worked. This is actually kind of huge because now my max hit in the crypts jumps up from a 5 tick 20 to a 4 tick 38 over the course of over a thousand chests. This is actually an extremely significant time save considering I need to kill three or four crypt creatures per run to even break even on blood runes. Oh, can I, can I make it to the bank? I've got a Dr. Jekyll after me. I need to go grab a Torstal from the bank before he despawns. Run! Surely we get it right. Surely. Right, I need to quickly think about what I'm going to do. Bank the Dark Crabs. And then grab a Torstal. But I'm going to have to be quick about it. No! sake. <laughs> right, I've just discovered some quite weird and yet very annoying tech, which is that I set this to defensive because obviously I still need a defense XP because I'm only 83 defense. I equip the bone staff also in long range, so that's on defensive casting as well. And then when I go back to this staff, it's chosen to put it in regular. That's really annoying. That is really annoying. Right, we're hitting the drop rate here, 15 kills total, and that is apparently the drop rate, 1 in 15. Literally, I never get lucky, ever. Okay, right, this is our ninth chest of the trip, and I just 4 hit Guthan, so that was pretty cool. Uh, ninth chest of the trip, 19 overall, so I reckon we can get 10 kill trips pretty easily with this gear set up. No item, sadly, but yeah, we can basically, I reckon we can do 10 kills, basically, overall. And I think that's not too bad. Oh, little known safe spot. Love this one. <laughs> so nice when I'm out of prayer just to be able to safe spot him over this. Varric's like the worst as well, because it's like, oh, do I pot up the prayer or not? Because I just know he's going to pump me whether I've uh, got protect melee up or not. So it's kind of rough. Uh, but this handily sorts it all out for me. Okay, this is going to be the one. Arms rope legs. Never lucky. We did hit 25 kill count though, and that is a combat achievement task. So that is pretty good. I haven't actually looked at the combat achievement list. I might do that in a second and see what, see what we can and can't do. Okay, and with this... Hold on. <laughs> when I say this lamp, what I mean is this lamp over here that ended up on the floor. Uh, I am going to be getting... 41 farming, one more level closer to last man standing, only 60 away now, which is a bit scary. Right, I believe this is chunk number 30 coming in, surely this is the one. Oh my god, can I just get a drop? Literally refuse, we're bringing back uh, the cannabis chunk of old here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Go on then, 42. It's the answer to everything. But not dry streaks at Barrows. <laughs> As if we're 42 dry now. That's just insane. So I've decided to go for a new setup. And the new setup is going to be mage only. Because I think with the additional accuracy from the elemental weakness, I think that that's basically going to result in me being able to hit on Arim in this mage gear. It's pretty good. Plus 59. Not the best, but, like, that's actually fairly decent. 
Uh, I've still got really high prayer bonus thanks to the soul cape and the ring of the gods. And I'm basically able to bring more super restores and more dark crowns with me. So I'm hoping that will offset what I've lost defensively. Um, and then also I will be able to convert my prayers to something like this. Uh, and so I can use Mystic Might for the extra damage percentage and accuracy. So hopefully all this together will mean slightly faster kills and slightly longer trips. Okay, here is the test. How do we hit against Arium? Okay, we're not missed yet. Not missed yet. Uh, okay, I think this works. I think this works. As long as we can like, keep our food supplies up in just the full robes. Uh, our hits against Aram are pretty cool. That does take away some of like the intrigue of Barrows, I think. The fact that you can just use air spells for all of it. So that's kind of lame, I guess. But it is what it is. 39 with the Ratbone staff. This thing is so good. I am literally a genius for thinking to bring this thing here. And surely we're going to get a drop. On the 50th kill count. No, we did not. Why am I like this? Why do I just refuse to get drops? I mean, I am saying this immediately after, like, spooning every single drop in Edgeville. But, <laughs> it wouldn't be this challenge if I wasn't moaning about going dry, would it? I'm just trying to bring back the memories of the Revenants and Vetion. Oh, okay, we've officially gone 60 chests now without getting a single item. We are four times the drop rate. Now, you know, I understand going four times the drop rate on a big long grind like Barrows is going to happen sooner or later, but this is four times the drop rate at Barrows on the first item. Like, come on, can we have got this, like, you know, 900 chests in or something? I just want to get an item now, please. Go on, then. Hey, there we go. First item, Verax Helm. I would say that's a pretty cool one as well. That's pretty nice. Prayer bonus, good defenses. Looks pretty good too. I will definitely take that one. Got it on 68 kill count, which is insanely dry for one item. But hopefully now we have one, the floodgates will open. Varax Helm, very nice, very, very beautiful looking item as well. So happy to have that one. And that is the first one, 23 to go. Oh my god, we actually got the back to back, that's so funny. Darox Axe, 2.2 mil, why is that thing 2.2 mil? On kill count, 69. 2.2 mils worth of Darox Axe. That's massive. How is that? How can I go 67 dry in a row and then immediately get the back to back? Why is it like this? <laughs> okay, so we've got our first two Barrows items and I don't have anywhere to put them because I've ran out of tabs. So I feel like I'm going to have to collapse one of these tabs. Probably the sort of just rare and random uniques tab, I think, is probably going to have to be the one that goes, which is a bit sad. Uh, but we at least get a new one then, and we can uh, we can put our Varax stuff in there. All right, let's chuck that there, put that up there. I could probably do this so I get the items in order. That would actually be quite cool. Maybe I'll do that. That seems like a nice way to do it. Oh my god, the, 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 rain of, the rain of drops just keeps on going. Darox Helm, that's actually a pretty cool one as well. Full Darox set would be pretty neat, to be honest. Oh my god, I just can't stop! It's raining drops! Oh, that is a big one. Arim's Robe Top. Things you absolutely love to see. That one is a massive. That is one of the big, big, big ones. Huge. That's one that we want to get as many duplicates of as possible. For some reason, I keep getting the drops from the ones where it's only like an L shape to get into the room. The one where I have to run all the way around, no chance. But the quick ones, I get pretty much every time. Arim's robe top, 4 mil value on that. 
that's kind of nuts. Uh, as if I've got four items in like eight chests <laughs> after going 68 dry. That's nuts. Aram's rope top though, very nice. Let's take a little peek at it. Very ugly in comparison to our older Chaos Druid top, but pretty cool nonetheless. Oh! What the fuck? We just got an Arim's and Arim's and Carol's leather top back to back? What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry. What? <laughs> what is this spoon that is happening right now? This is insane. <laughs> That's madness. That's actually ridiculous. Back to back with the two best tops. You joking? Okay, so we're going to make some quick gear changes, and that is to put on the Black Dehyde Vams for the additional range bonus, the Black Dehyde Chaps for the additional range bonus, and the Ranger Boots, and we're going to grab the Rune Knives. And this is hopefully just to speed up Arim a little bit, because Arim is kind of savage and like really kind of tough to kill and get down even with the air spells so hopefully that will work out quite nicely and we'll be able to kill it much much faster um but yeah we've been on an absolutely insane run of luck hopefully this can keep up and we can just keep getting collection log slots if we can get loads early then you know it gives us less to do later on so hopefully that works out for us now, I shouldn't actually lose any max hits in this setup, because essentially, my max hit is a 30. Each of these is plus 1%, which takes us up to 30.6. And then Mystic Might is plus 2%, which is again another 0.6. So that should take us up to 31.2, rounded down as 31. Uh, when we had the bottoms, it basically was 31.5, rounded down to 31. So the max hit should be the same. Obviously, the accuracy should be pretty similar on the Barrage Brothers, seeing as they're, uh, they've got like one magic or negative magic level, I can't remember. Um, so hopefully, we should now just have a faster run overall. And I'll be honest, we look like a badass pure <laughs> that's about to go PKing or something in this setup. So uh, I'm enjoying that as well. Oh, we got one. Pray for success. I don't even know what that one was. Was that take no damage? Possibly? If it was, I did it completely by accident. I've no idea what that combat task is. Weird. Oh, and there is another item. The Carol's Coif. Not a great one. One that I would probably have quite liked to be last, to be honest. Because, you know, going dry for that whilst simultaneously getting loads and loads and loads of, like, Turag's plate bodies and uh, Carol's bodies and Carol's crossbows and stuff like that would probably have been good. But I can't turn my nose up at a collection log. The collection log is looking pretty decent now. We've got two Carol's pieces, two Darak's pieces... Still waiting on Guthans and Turags, but we're at 6 out of 24 already after day 1 and 98 chests. I'd say that's pretty good. Okay, here is chest number 100. Surely this one is going to be another unique, right? Never lucky. Oh, uh, well, there is our first 100 barrage chest, so that is actually pretty mad. Did all of that in... Just about 11 hours. So it looks like we're getting 9 to like 9.2 chests per hour. I would say that's all right. I, it, apparently it takes about 1,400 chests in total to green log uh, barrows on average. So yeah, if we can do that every day, that'd be two weeks. I don't think I'm going to do this every day, seeing as it did take nearly 12 hours. Uh, but... Decent little start. Six collection log slots and 100 KC. Onwards and upwards. Oh! That is a very, very nice one. 109 kill count. Darok's plate body. And that is actually 
our third Darox item. So we've nearly got a full set of Darox already. We just need the Darox plate legs now and we'll have our first full set. That is actually very, very mega. Oh, another little collection log, Verax Flail. Not actually the best item, not too useful for me, I don't think. But there is a scenario where Verax is actually useful for me. Full Verax would probably be like best in slot for me against something like Cowfight Queen. So yeah, getting Verax early, not too bad. Ideally, my last item would just be like the Arim's Hood. And aside from that, I will just get like infinite of every other item. <laughs> that would be perfect. Have I got two Arim's on me? They're literally both attacking me. <laughs> How have I managed that? <laughs> Can I kill both of them? I wonder what happens if I kill both of them. Am I going to get double... Double rewards potential for it? That's a bit weird. So I'm at 87% now, and it did put me up to 96. Okay, so we managed to kill two Arims. Surely we get Arims from this. Never lucky. We did get some bolt racks, though. Bit suspect. <laughs> well, safe to say my uh, my prayer flicking didn't work. <laughs> Terrible prayer flicking. Surely that's good RNG for my uh, my chest though when I go and open it. We'll see. Oh, Guthan's chain skirt. Another new collection log slot. A ninth new collection log slot in a row. That is kind of huge. Nice, that's my first leg slot as well. So I think now I've got, yeah, I've got one of everyone. I've got a weapon, I've got a helm, I've got a top, and I've got legs. Look at that. Oh, that actually, that actually goes kind of hard. That's quite a nice little looking setup. The uh, Elder Chaos top and the Guthans chain skirt. Love that. And there is kill count number 150. No item from that chest, but... We've got nine different collection logs so far, which seems like a pretty good uh, pretty good rate of return. I think we're actually technically slightly dry on items total, uh, because we should have 10 at 150, but I would definitely take being slightly dry in favor of only getting collection log slots and no dupes. So yeah, pretty good. That's very nice that you can corner safe spot off here. That is definitely worth having marked. Very, very nice. Oh, as if you can do it here as well. This is so nice. That makes these basically safe. Every single one of these rooms is safe. This is pretty cool. Love this. The corner safe spot tech is very, very nice. Oh, there's our first dupe though. Darox plate body. Uh, that's kind of good, though, because it means that I can just use a Darox plate body if I want to. Uh, I don't think I want to at the minute because it's quite nice having this range set up, but that is the first dupe, sadly. Oh. Well, if I'm going to get any dupes, Darox is the one because Darox is probably the set that I'm most excited to use. So it's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Chest number 190. Surely this is something. Oh! Carol's leather skirt. That is a very nice one. That means we've got Carol's leather top and skirt and the coif. So we're just waiting on the crossbow now. That's nice. That is a tenth collection log slot as well. Uh, it keeps up that I keep getting drops on the easy path. That is a very nice one. Basically full Carol's. That is very nice indeed. <laughs> <laughs> We're making some good progress on this. I'm definitely happy about that. Okay, I think it's even though I'm not going to use it until I've got the dupes, I do actually want to have a quick look at the uh, at the absolute peak gear setup that we've got here with the Ranger boots as well for the extra iconicness. Oh, Barracks helm on as well. That is an extreme one chunk Iron Man. Look at the state of that. I look like I'm ready to go fuck some people up in uh, dead man mode. That is very, very, very cool for an extreme one chunk Iron Man. Let's just say that again. 
That looks very cool. But unfortunately, we're going to go back to our noob gear because I don't want to break any of this stuff until I've actually got dupes of it. So uh, maybe one day we'll look like that. And here is the 200th chest. Surely we get something for number 200. Why are we literally never lucky? 200 chests done in two days. Hopefully we can keep that rate up. And uh, if we can, this chunk should not take too long at all. Famous last words, that, isn't it? <laughs> in before four and a half thousand dry. Ooh! Gotham's War Spear on the account. 208 kill count. That's a pretty nice one. I don't think that's worth much, though. 197k! I remember when that was like 4 mil. Since when was that 197k? That's so sad. Oh, well, at least it's another item. That is 11 out of 24 on the collection log. Pretty good. Okay, we are at Barrows, but this is not a Barrows clip. Farming. There is level 42. We're now only five levels away from watermelons. Uh, 15 away from yew trees, which does actually sound like quite a lot, doesn't it? But I guess we're making progress. Ooh! There is our 12th unique, and uh, it might not actually be as useless as it looks, because I believe that this staff gives some form of damage bonus, right? Oh, get that lamp as well. We're not in combat. Right. So we've got... Where's the ma magic damage percent bonus? 0%. Arim staff. 5%? You what? I was expecting that to be 1%? 5%? That's, like, actually good. <laughs> what the hell? Right, as it turns out, Arim's staff is by far the best item from Barrows then. Who knew? That must be a new update. I don't think it's always been like that. That's mad. 5%. Right, time to uh, calculate some... Oh, that brings up a different tab. That's cool, though. I didn't know that. Um, right, time to calculate some DPS setups and see what uh, see what our max hits are going to be. Yes! Yes! That's so good. Look, so, right, I think I've shown this before in a video, but choose spell, defensive. Equip the bone staff, choose spell, defensive. Re-equip the Arum staff, and it's still on defensive, unlike the scepter, right? So if that's on defensive, then I equip the bone staff, defensive, then I equip the scepter again. For some reason, it's broken, and it defaults back to this. But if I'm using the Arum staff... It stays on defensive. So that is very nice. Because I'm not going to have to keep going back to defensive manually. Because that has been such a bore lake. That's so good. Why? I assumed it would be all stuff. Why is the scepter so balked? That's so weird. Okay, so after a little bit of experimentation, this is the setup we're going to go for. Because I believe in this exact setup, I should be able to hit 32s, which puts my DPS up by uh, over 5%. So hopefully that will help me get a few uh, like quicker kills that stop my prayer getting drained. And hopefully avoid my uh, super restores just a little bit longer. Make them stretch a little bit further. Um... But yeah, nice that I'm going to be able to just use defensive the whole time now. And I think because in the tunnels, I'll be using the bone staff rather than the arm staff. I think the arm staff should last a long time. So hopefully that works out. And there is our max hit of 32. That looks very nice. And we almost got out before getting our prayer drain. That is sad. I do think my hits on... Carol should be noticeably more accurate in this gear, uh, but we'll see. Well, it is safe to say that the cast XP from doing Wind Wave as the meta at Barrows these days is pretty good because we're already at 14 million magic XP uh, and we've only done like 250 kills and we hit 13 mil in Edgeville. So quite wild how much XP you get here. This must be really good like mid game training i would say just like go and get your first barrow set do like 500 chests and get like a couple mil magic xp that's not actually bad 
Oh, first Torax item and a new collection log slot. Torax hammers. Probably one of the like more useless items that I would have been happy to leave till last, but I cannot complain with a new collection log slot. That is now 13 out of 24, I believe, which I don't think is too bad in 254 kill count, but I have still had only 14 items total. So quite a wild bit of RNG there. Kind of bad in terms of total items, good in terms of collection log slots, but yeah. Torax hammers, not bad. Darok is so much more lethal when I safe spot him over the- uh, so much less lethal, sorry, when I safe spot him over these invisible safe spots. So nice. Ooh! Carol's crossbow! That's a pretty cool one, and another new collection log slot. That's pretty awesome. Don't know whether I'm going to use that very much. I don't have much access to bolt racks, and I do think that the crossbow is just better overall. But that is definitely an interesting one. Carol's crossbow. Collection log slot number 14, item number 15. That means you've only got 10 collection log slots to go. Is the spooning going to continue? That's a pretty sick one. Oh, done, oh, done, oh, done. I think I just realised that that's the full set for Carol's, isn't it? Oh, done, oh, done. Come on, Guthan, die. Okay, there we go. Right, let's have a little look. Collection. Yeah, we got our first full set of barrel, battle barrels, barrows. Look at that. That's pretty nifty, eh? I think that's the elite diary task. Fun fact: on my regular Iron Man, I've got 600 kill count and don't have a full set, so that's pretty nice to get. Right, let's get a good look at this first full set that we've got. Carol's crossbow, Carol's leather top, Carol's leather skirt, and Carol's coif. Let's take a little look. Who would have thought that an account like this, full carols, black dehyde vams, and the ranger boots would be an extreme one chunk Iron Man, by the way? This looks very, very cool, I must say. That is very epic. Ooh, me Arim's weapon just degraded slightly, which means we've got 58 chests out of a quarter of it. So times that by four, and we're looking at 232 chests from one Aram staff. I'd say that's not too bad. I'll probably put it back before it like fully breaks, just so I don't have any broken gear in the bank. But interesting to know that I can get 232 out of it. What is that? That's shocking. <laughs> 2,800 coins, come on. And with this chest right here, we are going to be hitting 300 kill count. Nothing on that one, but the log is absolutely mad. I feel like for 300, oh, I feel like for 300 kill count, this is actually kind of wild. 14 out of the 24 unique items, only one dupe so far. This is mad. I mean, obviously, it kind of doesn't matter until the last item, because you may go 2,000 dry for that one item. But I feel like getting a decent little head start on the whole collection log is very nice. So hopefully, we can knock out some more of these heading over to 400. Maybe 500, we can get up to, like, 19. That would be pretty good. Oh, no! The Oh no, it wasn't back to back, but we did just get a Carol's leather skirt, which is a dupe for us, sadly. Looks quite cool on the, on the ground like that. Been a while since I've had an item. Uh, but yeah, first dupe we've had in a while. And it's dupe legs. We've only got two of the legs as well. Carol's legs and Guthan's legs. We still need four of them, so that's a bit of a sad one. But I guess it's worth 900k. Free bank value, eh? Oh, face tank the Darox. Face tank the Darox. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, why do I do that? I've got the leather skirt on me as well. That would have broken. Why am I like this? Rat staff goes so crazy. Look at this thing. It's so overpowered. That's madness. Don't worry, because this is going to be Darox's legs. Oh. Just kidding. Oh, sad times. Chest number 360, the dupe. 
Carol's crossbow. Not the worst item to get a dupe of, and maybe I should just start doing some 100% runs, get some bolt racks. Let me know what you guys think of that. Should I be doing 100% runs and getting some ammo for the Carol's crossbow? I don't know, but... Yeah, dupe Carol's crossbow. <laughs> Why couldn't it be unique? I'm like, I'm, I'm now seven full items down on the drop rate. So hopefully we, uh, we kind of can string together some items soon. And there is the dupe, uh, the dupe Darox helm. That's a bit of a sad one. Would have been nice to get the Darox legs. At least we're getting some items though. Four chests apart. Carol's crossbow and Darok's legs. Surely, uh, not legs, <laughs> I wish. Helm. Surely we get a unique again soon. Oh my goodness, back to back. Carol's top. At least that's a useful dupe item for me. Oh, three, three dupes though. That's just slightly sad making. Oh, at least it's a good one. At least it's a good one. That's very, very usable for me. Now, there is something that I would like to talk to you guys about and generally just sort of gauge your opinion on. I'm not saying that I'm going to do one thing or the other yet, but I do want to kind of get your guys' opinion on a couple of things. So, firstly, this series is called Cannabis Chunk, and originally it was actually called Blood, Death and Nightmares. And the reason for that was that we were going to be doing the Theatre of Blood, Nightmare and barrows on an extreme one chunk iron man with those restrictions and that was kind of the idea to see this never before seen content on an extreme one chunk iron man now the chunk picker and its rng had other plans for us obviously and we've ended up with this vast swathe of the wilderness and kind of down into varrock and this sort of thing and we're still very far away from content like the theory of blood and nightmare basically five chunk rolls one two three four five five um now, there is one thing that I never had crossed my mind up until now, which was that, you know, I wanted to do these five, three pieces of content on Extreme One Chunk Man. That was the point of Cannabis Chunk. But <laughs> uh, we're now all the way over here, and these Herblore Chunks are kind of a problem for me. So, I mean, in theory, I could unlock these three chunks these two chunks, sorry, in three chunk rolls. I could just go one, two, three. Or I could go one, two... Can I? No, because I can't walk down there. Okay, yeah, so it'd just be one, two, three. So I'd need to get these three chunks. That's three chunks that I need to unlock. This is five chunks that I need to unlock. Now, you will see this smithing icon on all of these, so we're at least a 99 smithing grind away from unlocking Herblore or Theatre of Blood and Nightmare. But... I am kind of of the opinion, right? So from Theatre of Blood, you get about 11 million Herblore XP worth of herbs, right? Um, which is basically 99. And if I unlock this first, I'm going to have to end up doing like Chaos Druids for about two years to get the herbs to get 99 Herblore. Do you want to see me do that? Two years of Chaos Druids? Or do you want to see me kind of backlog that and like make it a quirk of this series of blood death and nightmares that herb law is locked behind theater of blood i never anticipated getting into this solution uh getting into this problem starting here you know i thought we'd get down to here way before we got over to here but that has not really been the case so let me know what you think about that the other issue that I'm facing is Last Man Standing. So I already have Last Man Standing unlocked here in this chunk, the east of Farrakh's Enclave. But crucially, I can't actually access it until I've got 1500 total, and I don't have that yet. I'm at something like 1440, so we're still like 55, 60 total levels away. Uh, so it's not really of concern yet. But as soon as we hit 1500 on the chunk picker up here, we're going to see a load of tasks added. Lots of them are collection log, uh, like collection log slots for Last Man Standing. That's no real problem for me. Um, because, you know, they're items that I can get and I can use. But the other ones are the Last Man Standing Winner's Capes. And the Winner's Cape that we're particularly of concern for is the 1,000 wins at Last Man Standing. Now, Last Man Standing inherently relies on other players, right? So there is a kind of uh, interpretation of the rules that I don't even need to do it at all. 
because it relies on other players. But there's a load of items in the collection log that should be got if I can get them. And, you know, like if I was playing like my own server and no one else played RuneScape, I was the only person playing RuneScape and you guys were watching and no one else played. I couldn't get these items, but I think that's a bit disingenuous. So I do think I will go for them. The issue is how I go for them. So option one is get 1000 last man standing wins up front and just do it as soon as I can. I think that's a bit of a shit idea based on the fact that I'm trying to release videos for this series because it will take, uh, I estimate it will take about four or five months of just doing Last Man Standing, which I don't know if you guys want to see that. Um, I think what would be potentially more interesting is doing like 50 wins per chunk roll. So what I would do is as soon as I get 1500 total, I would green log Last Man Standing except the winner's capes. Uh, I would then get 50 wins per chunk roll that I do. Um, and I think that works a lot better because uh, there's nothing from Varax Enclave, well, there's nothing from the Last Man Standing winner's capes that matters to me uh, in terms of, like, gear or upgrades or whatever. They're just cosmetic capes, so it doesn't particularly matter when I get them. But I do think I should get them. And... Um, I think if I get them over time, the last man standing clips will be interesting. Like there'll be a fun break from whatever I'm doing rather than a slog of four or five months of getting them. And getting 20, 20 chunk rolls will probably take like a year, but then we end up having like all of that spread across it. Now, having said that, if I get like a mega chunk, like I get 99 smithing, for example, as a chunk roll, then... I think then I'll ha I'll be happy to get more wins, right? And I think 50 is the minimum as opposed to the the uh how would you, how would you describe it? The, the the like the like the limit. So like if I get 99 smithing, I'll probably get more than 50 last man standing wins in a chunk. Um or the other option option 3 is just don't do the last man standing winners capes at all. Just do the green log of the like uh of like you know the swift blade and the god sword animation changes and all those kinds of things. Um magic short bow upgrade room pouch that kind of thing. Only get those don't worry about last man standing winners capes at all. So let me know what you think about those two things the theater of blood uh herb lore thing and also how we should deal with the last man standing winners capes. I'm kind of easy. I just want to release good videos for you guys, right? And I think tidying up some of the rules in that regard, uh, like bending the rules slightly so that we're not following the uh, Limpwer hyper orts train that he's created, which I don't, I, I don't think I can personally match, is probably a good idea. So yeah, let me know. And with this chest, we are hitting number... 400 of this video that is absolutely bonkers 400 chests done on the collection log we are looking at 15 out of 25 so we've got 10 items to go still i would say this is a pretty good selection i'm very very happy with the carols i'm very very happy that we're very nearly finished with darok uh, if there's one wish that I could make, it's that we were doing a bit better on the Varak, because I think realistically, the Carols, the Darok, and the Varak are going to be my best sets moving forward. Arim's is probably the worst, though the Staff is very good. Obviously, Arim's is good, but the damage percentage is the same as my Elder Chaos stuff, so kind of not that much of an upgrade. Uh, the Guthans could be interesting in future if we end up getting something like the Fight Caves. Uh, or Theater of Blood, just so we've got some level of passive healing. Torag, I guess, is relatively useless as a set, but it's decent tank gear um, anyway, but I guess that's nothing the Darox couldn't do. But the very fact that we don't have a way to fix this gear is, yeah, not ideal. But, um, yeah, I would say we've done pretty well for our first 400 chests. Hopefully we get luckier in the second 400 and we get more purples because I think I'm behind, right? Because we've got 1, 7, 9, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we've got 19 che uh, like items in 400 chests, which gives us a rate of, what, 1 in 21, something like that, which isn't good <laughs> considering the rate is 1 in 15. 
uh, we'd have to do pretty damn well on, on the next 400 to bring that back to rate. So if we can get pulled together like a 1 in 11, 1 in 12 rate for the next 400, that would be ideal and would probably push us a lot closer to getting this log finished. Um, yeah, kind of crazy. So fun to have barrows, eh? So fun. But I think that's where I'll call this video for now. Hopefully in the next one we'll be coming back with at least a thousand chests or having finished the chunk. Um, but otherwise, thank you for watching. A massive shout out to all of the channel members, especially our highest tier members, Patrick Wright, Jean Scallon, Mike Moran, and Fuchless. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I want to see you on the next one. So please subscribe to the channel, and bye-bye.